Okay, uh, four corners of the earth. We're going to decode this movie called The Game in 1997. Kurt Douglas, or wait, what, yeah, and uh, Sean Penn was the character, the two hot characters in here. And uh, <clears throat> the first one, let me give you a little backdrop. <laughs> the first guy, his name is Nicholas, right? Nicholas. And uh, my oldest brother, his name is Anthony Nicholas Miller. And then Sean Penn, last name Penn. <clears throat> this is a movie about a rich guy who's in the tower. And his brother gives him this card that changed his life, right? And he's like, hey, this really changed my life. And uh, it's this, like, service company. And it's like the gang stalking unit. And so... He, you know, this guy's rich. He has a divorce uh, from a wife named Elizabeth, the older brother. And um, so it's juicy from the beginning. It shows a guy who had it all. He was a banker. And then a huge conspiracy was pushed on him. At, and the beginning is very symbolic because it's a bunch of completed puzzles. So in the beginning, it shows Nicholas. And all of a sudden, this puzzle's put together, and then the puzzle pieces fly everywhere, and then the puzzles will come back together, and they'll fly everywhere. And so that that was the the background, and so that was funny. And uh, and it kept showing him as a child because he seen his dad on a roof, and I guess he was holding on to that pain. His dad committed suicide, jumped off a roof. <clears throat> so and. Uh, and he's showing his rich father, uh, they had this big old mansion, of course, and it was showing him as a kid, and he was by the swimming pool, and there's these three bullies who pushed him into the swimming pool, right? And I thought that was very interesting. And um, so the sky is at the top of the tower, and he's at his desk, right? And his ex-wife calls, and he says, take a message. <clears throat> and then he was on the phone call with somebody, and this lady's like, somebody came and wanted to offer or have a reservation, it said his name was Seymour Butts. And I think he knew that was his brother, Seymour Butts. And um, so he meets with his brother, and that's when they exchange the card, and he's like, do this. And his brother was smoking cigarettes, and Nicholas is all, I thought you quit smoking. And he's all, yeah, uh, I tried, but it didn't take. <laughs> so I'm smoking again. And uh, he's like, well, you can't smoke in here. It's it's against the law in California to smoke in a restaurant. And he's all, fuck California. <laughs> and he, like, he didn't like California, I guess. So, uh, and it reminded me because of the Simpsons, right? So you got Bart Simpson, who would call the bar tender at the bar. And he would say, yeah, is there a Seymour Butts there? And then the guy would say, Seymour Butts. And then Bart and his friends start laughing. And then he'd get mad. He did all these prank calls. <clears throat> so <clears throat> and then it said too one guy was in there and it's like he was doing a deal over the phone and Nicholas the guy said is that a promise and then Nicholas is like that's not a term I use or I'm familiar with so I guess he didn't make any promises because I guess this guy probably can't keep any promises you know which is very interesting and um let's see so Conrad his brother's name is like Connor Conrad Connie Connor um, I thought that was funny too. So you have Nicholas and Connor, <laughs> you know, and um, <clears throat> he came into the scene of the table and gave him the card. And so there's this game that his brother did to change his life. And he gives his older brother the card too and says, call this number. And he's like, okay. And he was in a consultation and he mentioned his younger brother's results. And he's like, oh, your brother did this too. His, his numbers are great. And they're like, he's like, what? So they had him answer all these questions. Weird interview. They checked his vitals. He had to answer all kinds of questions like, uh, have you ever uh, hurt um, pets growing up? And and like weird questions. He was in there for hours too, taking these, these tests, right? And so, so I noticed at the end of the movie, this guy's name, you know, is Nicholas, obviously. And uh, the tower they go into at the end is called the Tiffany Tower because he meets this woman and she's at this bartender or at this restaurant he always goes to and then um she spills this drink on him somebody she was an actor right everyone's in on it they're all actors it's a perfectly painted image of gang stalking and uh they even drive white vans right and they're shooting blanks 
right? It's like a like the white horseman with no arrows kind of thing. And uh, so I thought that was pretty funny, you know? And then uh, they break into his house. They keep sending clowns to his house with like keys in it. There's a key in the clown's mouth. And uh, it was used on an elevator they broke down and he had to turn the key. They ran his car into the, the water and they gave him a handle to so he can escape. So he got out. It was a very real test, you know? Like, um, so, but it seems like they gave him a key to get out of everything he was in, right? So it's kind of weird too. They put him in danger, but they also <clears throat> like made it so real. They gave him like a way out and uh, which is very crazy. And so this blonde chick, you know, she is running with them and playing it off. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's a bunch of pictures in a motel. Someone stole his credit card. And then there, there's drugs in a motel room and pictures of people having sex. And they ended up draining his bank account and making this stuff like, you know, it was all a game. Right. And uh, then that girl poisons him. Right. She poisons she poisoned Nicholas, and then he falls out, and his like his eyes are open, like he's dead, and they put him in a coffin, right? And then they he falls asleep, and then when he wakes up, he's at a cemetery in Mexico, right? And then he wakes up from the coffin, and he comes out of the coffin like he's reborn, and this was a very freaking trippy part, because he's walking through Mexico, and there's one part that says Mimi, my ranch like it just said uh uh ranch ranchitos but it was me me and then me my ranch you know like he's talking about some you know and that's funny too and uh and then there was this thing called uh arb 61 right on the on the little sidewall in mexico and if you look up arb 61 i'll show you right now arb 61 is a card that's called the beast card. See that green beast right there? It looks like Hulk. So ARB61 is a magical beast card and it's a cyclist. Like the thing on here, it's a mountain cycling beast. And it's also a forest cycling beast. All right, and the creature is a beast. It's uh, symptoms are a tree, fire, and the number four. And so I thought that was like crazy because you know, when they sent that uh, leopard-looking beast in New York, and it was from Mexico, right? The beast came from Mexico and went to New York, you know? And so, <laughs> boop. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? Yeah, that's what I thought, too. So I noticed at the end of this movie, so he's born again, and then he goes over there, and he, he doesn't have a passport. He has nothing. He has to give away his watch that came from his dad and his mom, and then it was worth thousands of dollars, so they gave him, like, stuff to where he can get back you know from that he had gold that got him back you know because he wanted to go kill uh when he came back to the tower he uh you know he, he had a gun and he went and found out one of the dudes was an actor he saw him on tv so he found him and he's like take me to him and he's like, i want to peel the curtains back and meet the wizard right and so he goes in their their room because they switch floors you know this company was on floor 14 and then they're on floor 25 and so he takes this guy hostage and then he goes in their lunch break room and all the actors that were in on it are in there having lunch together, right? And then he sees that blonde girl, which it's weird because the Tiffany Tower, you know, like my brother was with a girl named Tiffany Giles. They were hanging around each other before whatever happened. And then my brother Timmy, so that, that was the name where I was like, Tiffany Tower, what the hell? And so he wants to shoot her, right? He's like, and she's like, and the gun was fake because the gun he had was in a book. Well, it was in a book that he left at his house called uh, uh, How to Kill a Mockingbird, right? There's a book in the movie, and the title is called How to Kill a Mockingbird, which has to do with racism and rape and stuff. And so he had a gun in there, and then he they start coming and shooting, and, you know, a couple people look like they got killed, and they run up the stairs, and they go up to the very top of the tower, <clears throat> and... Um, he's gonna shoot her right and she's like freaking out, but it's, it's all a game And then all of a sudden they cut they're trying to saw through the wall So it's him and Tiffany or no her name is Claire um, The blonde girl and he has a gun by her and they're they're cutting through the locks, right? Because everything's locked he, he locked it to where they couldn't get out on the tower 
and then they have a saw and they're like and she's like your brother's on the other side of that wall they have champagne this is for your birthday it's, it's all a, all a thing and he's like bullshit and then all of a sudden they open it and it's his brother but then he shoots and it shoots his brother in the chest and then his brother fakes like he dies <laughs> and it's funny because you know basham means leap and then bella avenue and that's where the cremation was you know so my mind's just going what and uh so and then when he he had to go up on the elevator right he, he said uh oh i gotta go first and then she's like yeah i ain't going first and he he went up first and he said it again uh, when they were climbing up these stairs he's like i gotta go first again yep right so i gotta go first and i thought that was crazy and so he shoots his brother he thinks he killed his brother so and then he goes up on the ledge of the tower and he sees this big old glass thing down there huge building too and then he the girl's like no nicholas and then he flies off the building to commit suicide and he breaks through this uh breaking glass one layer two layer and then they had a big old black uh catcher right there and he fell into his party at the ball <laughs> right so there's this fucking ball going on and he falls through and, and he lands in his party and he's freaking out because everyone's like hey it's okay you know be careful glasses in your eyes and then his brother's down there he's like hey happy birthday and then he has a white t-shirt that says uh i got stranded in mexico no, everything I own got stolen. They dropped me off in Mexico dead. And all I got was this white fucking t-shirt, right? And then, oh, when he meets that blonde girl up in the tower, he, she's like, how the F did you get here? And he's all, I'm back from the dead, you know? And I was like, what the heck? And so I thought that was crazy. So, you know, she was kind of a, you know, crazy, you know, but the whole coffin in the, the back, the ARB, meaning beast, so the guy is going back and he wants to pull the curtain back on the wizard. And, uh, oh yeah, the license plate on this car, the last two numbers on it were 32. So it went something, 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 and then three, three, two. 32, someone's favorite number, right? So Nicholas takes a leap and bounce, Bashan and uh, Bella Avenue, and he comes back all the way to California and he wants to find that woman. And so, <clears throat> and then all of a sudden Connor and him are at the bar right? There's Connor and there's Nicholas right at the bar. You know, all kinds of shit happens at this bar and their contract is right there. Bam. And then he's like, yep, here's the total cost. And then, uh, Connor signs it. <clears throat> and then, um, cause he had to pay for all the stuff, the vans, the fake bullets, uh, all the stuff they had to do, he had to pay for it all. Right. So it was all a receipt book of what all this cost. And, then Nicholas looks at him, he's like, do you want me to cover half of that? And then Connor's like, yes, I would love if you do that. <laughs> that would be great, right? And so, you know, so they sign it and he looks at all the costs. He's like, whoa, that's a lot of money, dude. It costs a lot of money to do all that, that hoax, right? And so then he goes outside because that girl is getting ready to leave, right? And then she was flying to somewhere out of state or somewhere she had another gig and she was from colorado right so she's all i'm from oklahoma or she's like wait no colorado but she said oklahoma first colorado second right maybe she got to ranch in colorado i don't know but he ends up she's all do you want to go have coffee with me at the airport and then that's how the movie ended <clears throat> and this is this was a crazy movie and uh you know i almost wanted to like glorify the um who's the Who's the um, producer of this? Let's check it out. Because I'm done doing the whole glorifying of like people like in Hollywood. I don't think they deserve it, you know, because if we were in their shoes and we got the technology to invade people's life, we can do the same shit they did. We can make movies and we can become millionaires, you know. So I can't shake the fact that these people are rich, living in mansions, millionaires by robbing my life, my brother's life, my family's life and making movies and getting rich living on yachts like that drives me crazy and i hope the beast steps up and you know takes some people and you know kind of throws them around a little bit for all this because i think that's freaking wrong dude and uh so you know the movie the game and the the video or the the picture of this movie is a 
a guy stringed up with strings on his legs and his arm, like like the you know the little puppet master kind of thing. So, um, oh David, hang on, let me see here. The game movie was by, and the guy's name was Sean Penn, right? Which is crazy, Sean Penn, and then Michael Douglas. So, let's see what the who the cast was. Ooh, and it is by. Yeah, here's here's a look at it. Look at the guy's head. It's a puzzle, right? See how his head is a puzzle piece, and it's like coming together. Yeah, that's kind of like kind of crazy, dude. Where's how do I figure out the author, man? So the cast author is. Oh, by David Fincher, right? Directed by David Fincher. So, you know, obviously when you see movies before the whole world was awake, obviously, because I really believe now fake or news is fake, dude. And movies is absolute truth. And so I wanted to like glorify this guy. Like he has so much talent. But now that I'm able to put these puzzle pieces together, I don't really think directors even really get that much clout you know, at the end times, right? Because you see the personal level of invasion, dude. Like these people's creativity comes from, um, you know, like uh, Peter robbing Paul kind of methods, dude. Peter robbed Paul and, uh, you know, like Robin Hood. I mean, they straight be robbing and breaking in people's lives and this is how they get rich. And uh, so I stopped myself too. I'm like, dude, you don't get credit. You shouldn't even get an Emmy for that. The, the poor, innocent lives you guys hijack should be the ones getting rewards. They should be the ones getting paid. And um, and I don't care if you're listening either. I mean, because the truth is out there, bro. Like, you can't go, that was all me. I came in up with my own imagination and bullshit, bro. All you, all you, act, all you directors, I'm not really going to harp on the actors because the actor's an actor, right? But the directors, I don't care if you're listening to me right now. You have a little bit of skill. But take away us, you have nothing. You have absolutely nothing, right? And so I'm not going to give you an Emmy or glorify you because, you know, I want to take some of that away because of all this revelation, right? And, and I have a right to. Every human being has a right to because that's how you guys get rich, right? And uh, it's just, you know, that's the truth on that. So you should check it out. The movie's called The Game. Um, it reminds me of my older brother, to be honest with you. And uh, the pin, I mean, I've been attacked with a pin for ever symbolically. So signed some bilateral agreement. And so like Sean Penn and it's totally, you know, it's some crazy stuff. The Mexico thing, the coffin, born again. And it was in a graveyard too. And you guys know what my mom and stuff's going through and all that stuff. And so it's like. You know, and then at the end, it ends up being this big old game. And then the two brothers are all rich and just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> you know, so it's crazy. about oh, yeah, the family's still in money, you know, like the, all this stuff is just so much. And, uh, you know, when are you directors going to? I'll just sign. Let me sign it to you. Uh, 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 uh. Throw somebody a bone, huh? Yeah. I know you got plenty of them, probably millions sitting in your bank, dude, from hijacking me, my family, everybody. But anyway, check out that movie. It's called The Game. Uh, absolute mind boggler. Yeah.